Hey there, welcome to another episode of Mundane Designs. I'm your host Mundane, this video is part of my underrated game series, and today we're going to be covering Dreamcast and One Genesis game. Welcome back to the underrated game series. I think this is number 10 now. Guys, I'm, I'm not really trying to reinvent the wheel here. I'm not trying to do like, oh, these are hidden gems or anything like that. I think that these are games that did not get a fair shake when they first came out, be it from having heavy competition or not having like a really good budget for, you know, advertisements or just not getting the word out or maybe too early in the system's life cycle or even possibly too late in the system's life cycle. And I just don't think that these games are spoken about enough and I wanted to give them their due. They deserve more than what they've gotten and that's what I'm here for. And hopefully I can help find a game for you or at least a new experience for you to absolutely love. So, we're gonna move on with Dreamcast. In 1999, Konami released this game. It is Air Force Delta. I love this game. It is everything that I wanted the Top Gun video game to be. It is also a little bit of Afterburner. It is a little bit of the Iron Eagle movie series. I mean, like everything is absolutely dialed up to 11. You are a complete badass in this game. It is unbelievable some of the crazy missions that you pull off in this game. One of them, spoiler alert, alert, you fly through a base that is hidden in a mountain. And you're flying through it. It's awesome. I cannot suggest this enough if you are a Dreamcast fan. Yes, it's a little arcadey and it's a little bit on the campy side, but it's a great game. All right, moving right along. We're gonna go with another Dreamcast game. Gundam Side Story 0079, released in 2000 by Bandai. This game was one of my first Gundam games. I had played things like Mech Warrior and various other mech style games in the past, but this was my first Gundam game, and this is definitely more simulator than it is actual cartoon style, and it's great. I, I like both styles. I like the Dynasty Warriors Gundam style, and I definitely like this simulator style as well. This one felt very strategic, where if you walked into this game with a plan of what your objectives were, how you were going to get to it and stuff like that, you were almost guaranteed to win. It was so much more about up here than any of your reaction time and stuff. And I absolutely loved that. You just didn't waylay in there because you had a Gundam and you were better than everybody else. You actually had to think about things. You had to plan stuff out. And that was great for me. I absolutely loved that. So, we're going to move on to an import game. It's a Macross M3 for the Dreamcast by Warsashi, W-A-R-A-S-H-I. I know I butchered the name, but it was released in 2001 in Japan only. I really wish that this game had actually come out in the US, or at least in the North American area. Being it's a Japanese game, yeah, there's a little bit of a language barrier, but it's not so much that you cannot play the game. I actually got through most of the game just because I looked it up on GameFAQs and just read things that way and had a lot of fun with it. You get to play as some of the more interesting Macross planes and, and Veritex and stuff, and it's a lot of fun. I absolutely love this style. It's a very anime style, although it does lean kind of heavily to the simulator, but I love it. 
the lock-on system is great. The missiles are great. The the machine gun works fairly well, although I'm not that great with the machine gun. But I'm a very, very a whole lot better with the missiles. Just a whole lot better. And since we're on this mecha kick. We're going to go with a Capcom game for the Dreamcast released in 2000. That's Tecromancer. This is a fighting game, and Capcom brought all kinds of fighting games to the Dreamcast, but this is one of the ones that flew under the radar for quite a bit. I know a lot of people love Power Stone and, and Marvel vs. Capcom 1 and 2 and a few other games, but Tecromancer is very interesting. It was a... It's an anime-based one, and it's actually kind of plays like a Saturday morning TV show. And I think that was a great change-up. And you can play as all kinds of characters, and it's one of those weird fighters where it has a dedicated jump button. Um, you don't press up to jump, you actually have to hit a button to jump. And actually, some of the characters, they can't jump. Actually, one specific character cannot jump at all. It actually does activates a separate move, which is a lot of fun. The, the play style is so radically all over the place for every single one of these characters. And even one of the, the mechs is a brother and sister combo where the moves change depending on if the when they combine together, it's two jets. When they combine together, if the red jet is on top and is the arms, there's a different move set. And if the blue jet is on top and the arms and stuff, it is another completely separate move set. It is awesome. It's a very, very underrated game. And again, I can't say enough good things about it. Now, in 1999 on the Dreamcast, Sega released Time Stalkers. And this is a very off the wall turn based RPG. You play this character with a sword, and he looks like he's kind of like a vampire and stuff, but I don't really think he is one. I haven't gotten too far into the game, but it's got all of the the great bones of like some of those old classic RPGs and not a lot of people talk about this game I think that everything's there for this to be one of the greats except it did not get a very good advertisement campaign and I think that's where it kind of fell short that and it was kind of competing with all of the other Dreamcast games that were coming out in rapid succession. So, on to the Sega Genesis game. And this one's going to be released 1993 by Sega. And the title is Outrun 2019. This game is super fast. Is it classic Outrun? No, no, not by any stretch of the imagination. It is very futuristic. It is, I mean, it still has all of the outrun, you know, base layer stuff where it's racing. You've got to deal with the cars that are coming up. You've got to pass people. But in regular out, outrun, you don't go past 500 miles an hour. And honestly, that's where this game shines is the just absolute breakneck speed. And I love the way the car looks. And I love how the car has a real 3D effect with the engine where when it's turning and stuff, you can kind of see the fire that's like part of the jet engine gets blocked by the depth of how deep the engine is running in that machine. And it's just great. It's a wonderful, very fast paced driving game. And while it's not classic outrun, I do believe that it has earned its spot in the series. Well, that's it for this episode of Mondane Designs. I'm your host, Mondane, and I hope you enjoyed this episode as much as I enjoyed making it. I have videos on the 1st and 15th of every month, and look forward to sharing them with you. As always, please like, comment, and subscribe, and have a wonderful day.